Okay, so I'll keep this brief for obvious reasons, <laughs> but we'll finish the problem we were looking at yesterday and do another problem or two in the same page. So yesterday we were looking at, or I'm so used to teaching algebra and calculus, which both just run Monday to Thursday. So obviously not yesterday, but we were looking at ticket sales at a school event where 812 Tickets were sold, and one thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars were raised. At this event, the student ticket costs two dollars. And a non-student ticket costs three dollars. And um let's see. the question, let me put that a little further down so it doesn't overlap. The question we were asked was how many student tickets were sold. And we come up yesterday. Sorry. No, it's very hot. It is kind of hot. We come up yesterday with two equations. Well, first we define two variables. The number of student tickets and the number of non-student tickets. We said that, well, when we take these numbers together, we get the total number of tickets sold, which was 812. And because every student ticket is worth $2, and every non-student ticket is worth $3, Two times the number of student tickets sold, plus three times the number of non-student tickets sold, is the total amount of money made. One thousand nine hundred and twelve. And we made the observation that we have two equations and two variables here. And what we know how to solve is one equation with one variable. And there are, um, there are kind of very fancy ways of doing this. So that if you have like 10 equations and 10 variables. You can solve an equation that looks like this, but at the level of, you know, elementary math education, the method that gets taught is to solve for one variable, and then bug the variable you've solved to into the other equation. And that's something that might 
be kind of unclear when you just see it written out like this, but an explanation should clarify it. So we're going to pick a, an equation, either the first equation or the second equation, and we're going to pick a variable, either n or s, and we're going to solve for it. And in theory, we can pick any equation, we can pick any variable. In practice, one of these equations is fairly going to be kind of a pain in the butt to work with. And that's the second equation. If we decided that we were going to take the second equation, <laughs> And let's say solve for s. Well, we could do that, but we'd wind up with quite the nasty looking equation for s, and then when we plugged it in, we'd still have a nasty looking equation. <laughs> On the other hand, if we take the first equation, and solve for s, well, it's just one step, and the equation we get doesn't have any fractions in it. Um, now, arguably, this is still a bad choice because we're going to have an extra step at the end of the day that we wouldn't have if I sol if I'd solved for n, but it's what I started to do yesterday, so we'll power through with it and see what happens. So now that we know that S is 812 minus N, and we know that 2S plus 3N equals 1,912. You see what I mean when I said we take the value we solve for and plug it into the other equation. Two times 812 minus n plus 3 times n equals 1,912. And now we've got our work cut out for us because this is not a nice equation, but we can solve for one of the variables. We can mess around with this and solve for n. And of course, that's not what we were asked for. How many student tickets? We're actually asked for s here. But once we find n, we're going to take it and we're going to plug it in there and we'll find S that way. So, what should we do? I mean, well, why don't I throw that question out, actually? What would be a good first step here? Distribute. Distribute. We have n appearing multiple times. We're going to want to combine our n's together, but we can't do that 
when some of our ends are trapped inside parentheses and others aren't. So let me see, 800 times two is 1,600. 12 times two is 24 minus 2n. Again, we've said this, but just to be clear, we're using the distributive property here. We're multiplying 2 by that whole expression. Plus 3n is 912. A negative 2n and a positive 3n gives us a positive n. So to solve for n, we subtract 1,624. Does anyone have a calculator or can anyone do that real quick for me? Thank you. And then as we said earlier, I mean, now that we know what n is, s is 812 minus 288. Again, can someone give that to me? Sorry. No, you're good. No problem. Thank you both. 524. So <laughs> the exact details of how this problem works out, again, are going to vary from sort of person who does it to person who does it, in the sense that there were a few places where we made choices and maybe not even the best choices. I mean, here, here, where's here? Here, I guess, we decided to solve for S and then plug S into there. But we could also have said, well, n equals 812 minus s. And then we could have taken n and plugged it in there. And our work would have been a little different, but we'd have wound up with the same answer at the end of the day. So there's one example where we're given two variables and we have to get it down to one variable. Because again, um, we really only know how to solve equations with one variable. And that's, I mean, from elementary ed to our senior year in high school, that's going to basically be the case where we can deal with one variable. And if we have more than one, we have to somehow get it down to one. So let's maybe do just one more example, the eternal example from, it seems like every textbook. Is the farmer building a rectangular, enclosure where one side of the rectangle 
is a river. There are, and I mean, I'm sure you'll notice this when you do like curriculum development courses and look at, you know, selecting textbooks. Um, there are some examples that are just sort of ubiquitous and show up absolutely <laughs> everywhere. And this is one of them where we have a river and we have a rectangle where the river is um, one of the sides of the rectangle. And we're told how much fencing material we have. In this case, let's say, we have 1,200 yards. And then we want to do something with this. I mean, the really classic example of this is from calculus. How do we make the biggest rectangle with the fencing material that we have? We'll ask a less ambitious question. Let's say, that the long side of the enclosure must be twice as long as the shortest side. Assuming that we use up all the fencing, so we make the biggest rectangle that we can make, what is the area of this enclosure? So we should probably start by deciding what our variable should be. What are some what are some promising seeming variables here? Three sides. The three sides. I agree with that. Let's call this side the long side. We'll call this side short. One and this side short two. So we have three variables on the board, but maybe we can do a little better than that. What's the relationship between the two short sides? They're equal. <laughs> so we have three sides, but we can get away with just two variables. And now I'll go to another frame soon. I know it's annoying when I'm sort of crunched down. So what do we want here? Well, we want the area. And the area is the short side times the long side. So what we really need to do is figure out what the short side is and figure out what the long side is. Because once we have that information, we can just multiply them together. Can we write an equation that involves both the variables S and L. We're given 
That's that's asked that question a little more specifically. We're told how much fencing we have. What's the relationship between S and L and the amount of fencing we have? Uh, S times L equals 1,200. So that's a good thought, but S times L isn't quite right. Because plus, I meant, plus. sorry, thank you. <laughs> so, and your S plus L is 1200. Does that seem right to everyone? We have two S squared, yeah. 2s. I hear s squared and I hear 2s, and the 2s is right because we have an s, and then we have another s, and then we have an l, and an s plus an s. is two times s. And let me see. So we're still lacking something. This is the problem if we were doing a calculus class and we were trying to figure out, so how long should S be and how long should L be? Um, but for this problem, we're given additional information. So what information have we been given that we haven't used yet? Must be twice as long as the short side. Right. That L has to be twice as long as the short side, which, if you write it mathematically, says that L is two times S. So once we've reached this sort of stage of the puzzle, I'm going to ask you what to do next, but my hand moved faster than my mouth. We'll take that L and we'll plug it into the equation. And we get the 2s plus 2s is 1,200. 2s plus 2s is 4s. Divide both sides by 4. And for once, I will be able to do that in my head. S is 300. 300 what? 300 yards. Okay, so now to find the area, to find what we actually care about, we need S, which we found, and we need L, which I haven't written on the board, but what is L? 2S. So if S is 300, L is 600. And now, let's see, six times three is 18, and there are four zeros 
So I make that 180,000 square yards. And that's, we could keep doing examples, I guess. They're all going to be basically like either this or this previous example. Here's the textbooks always ask. Let's do one more example. It's right from the textbook and examples like this always kind of trick my class consciousness. So, so but suppose we're living in an Agatha Christie novel and someone dies and leaves 486,000 dollars spent unevenly between three children. By the end of the novel, no doubt one or more of them will be dead and the will will have turned out to be a fake. But for now, let's say that the eldest child receives three times as much money as the youngest. And the middle child receives $14,000 more than the youngest. And let's ask, how much does each child inherit? So before we can start writing down equations, we need to decide what our variables are going to be. What would be some good variables for this problem? M. M. Thank you. This isn't a trick question. If we want to know how much each of these children receive, we want to know how much the middle child receives. We want to know how much the youngest child receives. And eldest. I'm the eldest. And I'm going to use E for eldest so that it doesn't look like a zero. So can I write down an equation involving these three variables? Could E be three X? Yep, that's exactly correct. I mean, three Y, because that's what we're calling the youngest. But what's another equation? M plus 14,000? Or no, for the middle one? So. Wait, is it 14,000? 14,000 more than the youngest. You're on the right plus track. Plus C plus Y. Plus Y. So, I mean, what this is, what this is really saying, if we just translated it, is that to say that someone receives some amount more than someone else, 
This is really a statement about subtraction, but we can rewrite it as a statement about addition. One more equation before we're good to go. <sighs> Why? Equals, I don't know. X Y equals is it, e wait. M. No, money. E minus M. C. So why do you rather than <laughs> rather than say stuff at random, although I do appreciate your enthusiasm, why don't we look at what information we're given that hasn't shown up in an equation yet? Where we still have the total. You haven't done anything with the total amount of money. Y equals that minus e plus m. Well, why are we minus m all of a sudden? Because um, e plus m is like they have the total, so you gotta minus whatever's left from uh, total. Yeah, I mean, what we're really saying, I don't even know if if minusing is going, well, we can minus if we want to. What we've really had is that the youngest plus the middle plus the eldest is this amount of money. And I mean, the reason we minus is just kind of symmetry. I mean, we have an equation for E, we have an equation for M, we might as well have an equation for Y. So these three equations, So we can't deal with multiple variables. What we have to do is try to get rid of two of these variables, in fact, and write down an equation that just involves one number. And our trick here is going to be very similar to the trick here, where we you know, we knew that L was 2S, so we plugged that in. What, I mean, what should we plug in to what here? Plug in M. Plug it in to which equation? Uh, to the very bottom. To the very bottom equation. That's good, that will get rid of M. Is there anything else we can do? You can plug in, can you plug in the E for E to get rid of the Y? I, I don't know about getting rid of the Y, but, the y but I agree that we can plug in an E. Yeah. And now the equation we're going to get is kind of messy. I mean, that happens. Yeah, no, 14,000. About to make quite a 
frustrating error. So we subtract M, we subtract E. And now we have a bunch of Ys floating around and we want to, to consolidate them, to combine variables would be, I guess, the technical phrase. So the first thing we want to be a little careful about, this subtraction is going to distribute over that addition. So we'll have a minus y and a minus 14,000 and a minus three y's. So there are multiple answers to this question, but now what? Negative y minus three y, right? Yes, that's a good thing to do. We've got this negative y and we've got this minus three y y equals 486,000 minus y minus another 3y is minus 4y. Then minus 14,000. So what now? Minus the 486,000 from the 14,000. Yeah, I agree. We've uh, run out of space, but we're going to combine these numbers. So let's see, 486,000 minus four, 482 minus 10, 472. minus, and we already combined the y's together. Next. Uh, plus 4y to both sides. Plus 4y, exactly right. And we wind up with a division. So what is y? I mean, it's 472,000. Yeah, 118,000. Did you get that? Uh, no, I got uh, 98. Oh, I got 94. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, when you do 472 divided by 5. That's no, not... it's 5 by you, you divide divide by 5. five. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so then you get yeah. 94,400. You shoot right. Hmm. I don't know. Really good. I don't know. <laughs> I did it. 400. 95,400? 94,400. 94, 400. Yeah. Great. Okay, and now we've done the, the strenuous part of the problem. So how much does the middle brother get? 14,000 more. 14,000 more, which is, let's see, nine, 10. Uh, I make that 108,400. And the eldest brother? 283,200. I hear 283,200. 
tenía manos. No. So three times three times this. No. All right. And with that, all oh, that remains is to say that I hope you have a very enjoyable spring break. Thank you. Um, no, well, this is the whole world update. That should be posted so we can rewatch it. It will. Yes. Thank you. So one through eight, four, five.